We also have to deal with indestructible object, a very odd piece by our friend Man Ray. Now, Man Ray makes this work in 1923, but transforms it a decade later. Following a devastating breakup with Lee Miller, a fellow photographer who had also been his assistant, muse, and model. And he's distraught, so he replaces the original eye with a cutout from a photograph of Miller's eye. Though he attaches only a fragmented image of Miller to the metronome, the accompanying instructions suggest that for Man Ray, the object was an emotionally evocative portrait. The instructions invite us to create our own indestructible object, and then quite radically destroy it. Here are the instructions. Cut out the eye from the photograph of one who, have, who has been loved but is seen no more. Attach the eye to the pendulum of the metronome and regulate the weight to suit the tempo desired. Keep going to the limit of endurance. With a hammer well aimed, try to destroy the hole in a single blow. Really kind of remarkable, the idea of creating a piece of art specifically to destroy it, but then its destruction could as also serve as the art, almost a form of performance art that we are performing ourselves. So Man Ray makes several versions of this piece, originally titled Object to be Destroyed. The title was interpreted quite literally in 1957 when a crowd of students protesting a Dada exhibition in Paris stole one of the objects. And when Man Ray fills out the claim with his insurance company, the agent suggests he buy an unlimited supply of metronomes with his reimbursement money. Man Ray, of course, replies that not only would he do just that, he would also retitle, retitle the work Indestructible Object. So it goes from object to be destroyed, based on those instructions, to Indestructible Object. Because, of course, he just makes more of them. And there's numerous versions of this out there, many of which are created by the artist. There's almost no way of knowing which one is real, uh, you know, actually created by Man Ray, and which ones are created by imposters other than provenance, which is always questionable anyway. And what he's done is he has again subverted the very idea of art because he's taken away the permanence. Originally, this is something to be destroyed, and then he completely changes it. You couldn't imagine Michelangelo coming up to the David and going, hey, by the way, that's David, but it's also, you know, this other person. And I've just changed the name of it. Or I've changed the concept behind the Sistine Chapel. Or I've changed the title to The Last Judgment. You couldn't imagine that sort of thing, yet that's exactly what Man Ray is doing. He's adding an element of the unknown to art, which we don't like at the time. We like a sense of the concrete when it comes to art. We don't want art to change once it's created. It creates a, uh, an uncomfortable sense of uncertainty. And yet Man Ray is sitting here saying, you know what? Yeah, you can create multiples. I may change the idea behind it. I could come out 40 years after you bought the original worth millions and create a thousand more. You have no way of knowing because he's intentionally out there to subvert not only the art market, but society as a whole. After all, that is our constant theme, our constant companion when we're dealing with Dada.